Hi, bros. This is the 7D TV. Today I have brother Tyree Phillips from Mississippi State University. Rude. Tyree. Yes, Tyree, what, what's this I hear about the bros getting drafted? What's up with that? Hey, football bros come out of Mississippi State. <laughs> what? They got football bros yes, in Mississippi State, though? We got like five bros in the league right now. Okay, okay. So, walk for the bros that may not know the football bros out of Mississippi State. Why don't you give us your full tag, bro? Uh, I'm Tari Phillips, Tail Dog, TD Square, Spring 18. TD Square. All right, that works. Rude. So, Tyree, I know it's been a long journey. First of all, the bros. And lots of families out there are supporting you, and we want to see you um, make it like you have. And tell us where you're going while you're at it. Um, right now, I'm just um, back home in Grenada, Mississippi, just working out, staying in shape, and just, you know, um, finally got my playbook, um, my iPad. So just, you know, just trying to keep up on the job and, you know, while this quarantine going on, just staying safe and, you know, just. Doing what I got to do. Well, let, let's back up a little bit and let's talk about when you were in high school, did you ever dream that you would become a draftee for the Ravens? No, not sir. Um, well, my story is kind of real freaky. Um, I only played one year of high school ball. What? I just played my high school season. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, I understand you quit football for a little while. Is that true? Yeah, I quit football, like, after my eighth grade year. Um, I was in the band, and I played basketball. Um, my dad's a preacher, so music always been just a love that I had, and I had a passion for it. So, um, and I was the type, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it full heartedly. So, I love music, and I just did it. And um, I had a coach um, named Coach McGee. He went to Alcorn. Um, he played football at Alcorn, and um, he was just telling me how music is a hobby. It's something that would be for the rest of my life. And just how this size, you know, the game of football is not long at all. Um, this size, you know, God gave it to you for a reason. Do something to it. Um, do something with it. And like I say, like, two weeks later, he passed. Like, a tragic accident. Oh. Um, he just on the toilet and just, you know, somebody came down and checked on him and he was gone. And it was just confirmation from God. Like, just, it just something that stuck with me. And I decided to give it a go. And, hey, I'm a Baltimore Raven right now. I see that. I see that. Hey. So, you know, I hear this rumor that you got this little saying that says all or nothing in your mindset. Yes, What's that about? Tell us a little bit about that. It's all about just, you know, my parents, my, my parents, um, they were just one thing. Um, one thing in our household, um, we don't quit. So you hear me saying I quit football in eighth grade, but it was just something that it wasn't in me. Like, I didn't want, I didn't have no love for it. Um, Cause I thought football was stupid. Um, it, I thought it was just a whole bunch of grown men just hitting each other and stuff like that. I mean, just being young minded. Um, but yeah, if you like, if if I if I don't have my all into it, I'm not gonna do it at all. I hear, I hear. So, what would you give as like some advice to those in high school or those that just started college that? You know, everybody has that dream of making it to the league at some point. What would you tell those individuals? Because I understand that you were a top-notch student, too. So, you know, this wasn't like you just, you know, fell into Mississippi State. You you were doing some things at Mississippi State, too. Tell us me a little bit about what you would tell those kids at this point. Um, I would tell those kids, um, although, I mean, everybody have inspirations going to the NFL, but, I mean, just being realistically – it's slim. It is very slim. Um, like, I'm not going to be the one of just lots of kids, but I also going to give them hope. Just let them know that um, it's never too late. Um, I've only been playing football six years, and I got drafted in the third um, round from just, you know, listening to my parents, just a little thing saying, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Um, um, going to Sunday school, I mean, it's a little things like, Going to church with your grandma, um, <laughs> you know, sitting at the table. So they still know. getting on you, huh? They still get into you a little bit, huh? Every oh, now yes. and then. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you. 
just little things like just sitting at the table with your family, you know, taking food to, you know, the room, something like that. Just, um, just little values, um, especially in the classroom, because my mother was big on the classroom. Um, you and y'all, uh, you, you was going to have all types of chores or sometimes a, a, a little whipping. Right. You know I mean, sometimes you got to get done. Hey, um, you know, that's the life we live, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> How did the did did the frat help you any in this journey? Uh, when you crossed and how how you got to this point, even at this point. Oh, uh, the frat helped me a lot. Just with a lot of uplift, just like um, when I road trip and talk to bros, you know, bros just tell me, "Hey, man, you gonna be next and stuff like that." Just you know, keeping my head um, keeping my head high. Cause you know, sometimes this game, um, you're not gonna get the way you want it all the time. Some games you're going to have a bad game. Some games you're going to have a good game. But, you know, brothers and this brotherhood, um, just, just, it's such a, it's such a different fraternity than other fraternities as far as just, you know, just the love and the bond that we have and the unity. So it's just big. And I thank um, the fraternity um, just as far as just the uplift and the thank yous and far as just, just saying, hey. You don't even got to talk about football. Just, you know, just regular conversation, just getting to know each other. Just, just being out and not having to worry about status or anything of that nature, that's huge in the frat sometimes, yes, isn't sir. it? So have you made any connections with the other football bros in the league yet? Um, Well, it was some football bros that came back to um, town during my draft night, like um, JT Gray. Um, these are my pro fights. Um, JT Gray, he's spring 17. Um, he played with the Saints. Elton Jenkins, spring 17. Uh, he played with the, um, the Green Bay Packers. Um, Jeffrey Sim- Simmons was my LB. He was first round last year with the Titans. And so, got, what, got what is this team. Mississippi? This Mississippi love was just all around you, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Well, what what would you say was outside of your parents? What was the one thing that you held on to throughout this entire process? Um, um, I would say a poem that I learned um during my intake, um, just during the fraternity, and was see it through. Amen. I know see that. Through, yeah. Um, when you're up against the trouble, true. yeah, you gotta you gotta keep going. I mean, you got it too. Like, um, just eyes high head. Hey, how to the finish. See it through. See it through. I, I mean, feel you. I mean, during that night of draft night, um, you know, I was I was tense. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> Dog, I was tense. Because I'm not ability. It wasn't just I was just, you know, I was too good or anything. It was just I knew my ability and I just knew like I gotta get drafted today. And today. You know, not tomorrow. Today. Today. I feel you. I, t- I took I took a faith. I got a short story about that. I took a faith on God. Um, took a faith, um, a step of faith right there. Um, because I told my mother, um, to invite the family. Um, on Friday, um, I was like, Mom, I'm getting drafted today, not knowing, because nobody really knows unless you just, you know, that first round, you know, type of guy. But um, I only started at Mississippi State one year, so I just told my mother, um, I'm getting drafted today. Bring everybody over. I don't care. So I was just everybody there. We just all watching the TV, and I'm like, "Oh my god!" Did you get a it phone was, call from the Ravens, or how did that happen, sir? Did you get a phone call from the Ravens prior to, or was it after, or how did that? How did you get notified? Okay, so um, during the draft, um, I think the Eagles had the second to the last pick. That's who I thought was going to get me. So after that, the um, Baltimore had the the very last pick. So I knew they just lost the future Hall of Famer right guard, and then they never they didn't draft a, a O lineman yet. So I'm like, mm, I got a gutsy feeling. So he said, <laughs> um, Baltimore Ravens are on the clock. Next thing you know, I heard my phone. Um, what? I have a little dog bark on my phone. So I heard no. My phone bark, and next thing you know, it was an unknown number, and it said Baltimore. It was like a sign, a sign of relief, just. Went over my body. It's still unreal to this day. I um, just went over my body and I picked the call and it was the general manager to let me know just, hey, we're we're happy to have you. We know you can play football, but um, just we know we like to get high character guys in the locker room. And he was just saying, welcome to the Baltimore Ravens. And he heard my folks um, 
yelling. He was like, <laughs> I said, well, it's more than 10. But <laughs> so we gonna, I'm, I know you got a lot of time um, issues on you now, and you've been running. Don't forget the bros in the 7th D, the SEC bros down here when you get yes, to Baltimore now, you know. But, uh, you know, you're going to get a lot of interviews over your career, but very few are going to allow you to just say what you want to say at the end of it. What would you like to say to the SEC bros and to the brothers, and, I mean, the people in Alabama, Georgia, Florida, and Mississippi, that it's really in your heart that I know you're thankful because we've talked a little bit. And what would you just like to say to even the little kids, the people that are supporting you, whatever, at this point in time? It's, look, it's your floor, bro. You say what you want to say. Um, I would like to say, knowing that we're down south, um, just stay grounded. Um, don't change for nobody. Um, like, like, like I said, um, church, family, I mean, God, family, and just anything that you do in life. It only got to be football. It don't got to be basketball. It only got to be sports. I mean, it could be in the nursing room, the doctors, the lawyers, um, even police officers, anything like that. If you're going to do something, do it with your whole heart. Don't go half in or half out. Just do it with your whole heart and just, just pray. Just pray and let God use you. Cause you're never too young to pray. I'm talking to kids and grown folks too. You're never too young or too old to pray. God is listening to all, of them. and just stay, keep your faith and um, grind. Because like the Bible said, faith without work is dead. So I mean, you can have, you can say, I want to go to NFL. I want to be a lawyer. That's 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 cool. It's good to have dreams because dreams give you hope. But if you don't have the work ethic to lead to your dream, I mean that just false hope. So um. Yeah, just anything you do in life, just go hard and put some groundwork onto it. Just go on, go put your face in the mud. Hey, cause we from down south, we ain't, ain't much down here. So, I mean, we got, we got to get it out the mud. So, yeah, keep God first and it all is well. Bruh, once again, on behalf of the 7th D, congratulations. Keep your head up. Remember where you came from. And remember, the seven D, I always take you back, even though you're going up north a bit. <laughs> we love you, and we appreciate you, and represent us well as you go out, my good brother. Thank you. You have a root. Talk to you later.